All right, uh, Free Radicals and uh, Tulsi Kratz, Bernie Kratz, uh, Green Party people, Independents, whoever you are, Libertarians, um, hello, I'm Dave. Uh, it is the day after the debate, the third Democratic uh, presidential debate, which was hosted by ABC, the network I used to call Always Bill Clinton, and, uh, you know, I've got conservative roots, and so I typically uh, fall back on those uh, acronyms and things that I learned uh, as more of a conservative uh, cr cr critic, uh, skeptic, if you will. Now I'm just a skeptic, a skeptic of everyone. It'd be nice if I could speak, right? All right, welcome back to the Radical Independent. My name is Dave. Um, I'm more independent than radical, but being independent, uh, telling the truth in this day and age is an act of uh, radicalism. Uh, and uh, look, I'm just a guy who started a channel. I'm nobody special, that's for sure. Uh, I'm not the most articulate man on the planet. I'm just uh, calling it like I see it. Uh, it's the morning after the Democratic Party had their third debate. Uh, I watched a few highlights from the debate. Um, I'm completely underwhelmed by both the debate format and, and what was uh, talked about. There's a lot of identity politics going on as usual. Uh, I get it. Uh, we want to have the country uh, represented properly and we want people uh, of various backgrounds and skin colors and genders and so forth. We want um, some representation that, that is proportional to the population. I'm right there with you. But when it comes to issues, um, it's really outrageous. Let me, let me just go right into this. It's really outrageous that Tulsi Gabbard was not on that debate stage. When it comes to issues, uh, her voice, her anti-war voice, uh, speaks the ultimate truth to power. Uh, the United States has built up this giant infrastructure that is based on a military-driven economy. And what are we doing to dismantle it? We're doing nothing. My question to Elizabeth Warren would be, what are your plans on shifting our economy from a military-based economy to a more even you could say green economy all right i'm i'm willing to listen to the green economists out there because i believe you can create jobs and you can also help save this planet from even look even if you don't believe even if you're a, a skeptic of what's going on in the climate uh, wouldn't it be a much better economy to say build sustainable living quarters and so forth, wouldn't it be a better economy than basing, you know, uh, your economy on militarism and constantly looking uh, for countries to invade? So that voice was missing last night. It was really missing. Uh, and Tulsi, like I said, I did a video yesterday, got a lot of views on it. Um, People are wondering where I got the source from. It was a Harris poll in New Hampshire. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard at 6%, technically in fourth place. She's ahead of Kamala Harris. You know, New Hampshire has a lot of libertarian and independent-minded people. A lot of people from Massachusetts who I would call old-school liberals, the ones who were protesting the Vietnam War and um, subsequent conflicts that we've been in. A lot of those people moved into New Hampshire. Of course, you're right next to Vermont. Bernie Sanders doing quite well in a couple of those polls. Um, Elizabeth Warren, yeah, and she's from Massachusetts, but people are gravitating uh, toward Tulsi Gabbard. I get it. Warren, Sanders, and um, Biden, who last night again had a very forgetful debate in, in more ways than one. Uh, from the highlights I've seen, although the media this morning, the headlines are Joe Biden came out swinging. 
I mean, you don't think we're all being gaslighted to a point where you just sit here and you go, this is already decided. This has already been decided who who are the acceptable candidates and who aren't, all right? And if you're sitting here watching this, thinking to yourself, oh, there's hope. There's tons of hope. I can see hope on the horizon. I mean, Tulsi is still doing well, even though she's not in these debates. Um, if she's not in the fourth debate, uh, then I'm just going to say it. And there's really very little chance that she's going to be the nominee if she can't get into the fourth debate. And it's just the way the system is rigged. It has nothing to do with Tulsi Gabbard. I mean, you could say, look, on the ground, she can still do reasonably well. She might finish fourth or fifth. If she hangs in there until the convention, she's probably going to accumulate some delegates, and hopefully she'll have some power and some clout. And if Bernie needs that help and that power and that clout, I'm pretty sure Tulsi will be there. Uh, the thing we have to worry about is, you know, we're shifting, and I'm even hearing um, progressive commentators talking favorably about Elizabeth Warren these days. I don't trust her. I don't trust her. She would not be a unifying figure for this country. Uh, I think she's... Um, fish food for Donald Trump as well. I, I really do. I think she would be, I mean, if she becomes a nominee, Trump is going to have, I mean, and people will tune in and the ratings and see, this is what they're looking at too. Which candidate would uh, create more ratings for these big corporations and more ad revenue, you know, pop your popcorn ahead of time. It's Trump against Warren. You know, Trump called her, uh, a Native American slur or something. And, you know, that's what they're going to focus on. And, you know, everybody forgets that Elizabeth Warren was the one lying about it. And, and Trump called her out. And Trump was correct in his crude uh, way. He was correct. And his supporters love that stuff. They eat it up. They're not eating up issues either, by the way. They just like the theater. They like the P.T. Barnum aspects of it. Meanwhile, Tulsi Gabbard nowhere to be heard from. And the whole thing is entertainment. It's like football. It's like watching a sporting event. Um, and people wonder why I've been talking more and more about the Green Party, about just saying, look, we need to just build something new from the ground up and talk about issues, talk to people directly and say, do you know these two parties that are fighting for your vote? They really don't care about you. Read the book by Thomas Frank, Listen Liberal. Democrats have given up on the working class. Um, Bernie Sanders believes in some things that most of the other Democrats don't believe in. He would actually fight for working people. Tulsi Gabbard, same deal. We shall see what happens. Now, if Bernie doesn't get to where he needs to get to... By the way, last night, Bernie is showing signs not of necessarily the aging thing but he's campaigning like crazy and he didn't sound good his voice was obviously raspy and hoarse i would say he still did probably close to the best a lot of people like this guy julian julian castro last night i just he's a tribalist he's um i i don't know he's not the candidate that we need right now to um you know, calm the waters. That's why Tulsi Gabbard is the best. And people just discount the fact that she's not only uh, photogenic, uh, she's not only electable, she's not only the person that's got the military background, but she's so well-versed on every issue. She's composed, she's classy. She is like a female uh, JFK. She, she just really is with, um, I would say, more progressive values and views than JFK, but somebody who you would look and say, okay, I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud that that's our president. I mean, what an incredible upgrade from the orange orangutan. I'm sorry, and I'm a former supporter of that guy. I, I And it, it's it pains me to say it at this point. And I was willing to look the other way on a lot of stuff, but um, 
I think the magnitude of who he is and how he's gone about doing things and saying things, and I really don't trust. I think he's just a, a an opportunist who wants to leave a legacy of look at all the crap that I supposedly got done. And his supporters, I think, are turning a blind eye to his foreign policy stuff and just the general um, negativity that he he puts off every day. And Tulsi Gabbard would reverse that. And that's why, rather than have a unifying voice on that stage last night, you had a bunch of tribal warriors, with the exception of Sanders, you know, people are giving Elizabeth Warren a bit too much credit. Uh, I just don't think she's the candidate that can beat Donald Trump, and I don't think she's all that interesting to listen to for very long. I think Bernie Sanders has got that lane, and Elizabeth Warren is trying to get into his lane to some degree. And she might succeed because the media is all about her. It's certainly not about Bernie. Bernie could be winning nationally. He could be leading every single poll nationally we just don't know because of how they conduct these polls we're gonna have to get votes on the ground before we really know who is where i mean this could be another 2016 where after the first uh, caucus or primary the media is spinning their way trying to to make sense of oh my gosh i can't understand this because every poll had joe biden up all these polls said Elizabeth Warren was in the lead and, you know, and then like Tulsi Gabbard will finish third or fourth or something and they won't even talk about her. They'll just, they'll limit it, they'll limit their coverage to the top two candidates or something and then not even talk about how Tulsi, like I say, in the Harris poll was literally in fourth place in New Hampshire. And it, you, you cannot say that she wasn't in fourth place. So... The debates last night without Tulsi Gabbard, to me, um, shows where we're headed. Uh, and if we continue to go in this direction, watching this unfold, and the conservatives, by the way, they're going to have a field day with a lot of this stuff. Because a lot of this stuff focuses on identity politics. It's bean counting. It's saying we need this, this, and this. And again, at the beginning of this video, I understand you need proportional representation. But if you're talking about that more than you're talking about, you know, Medicare for all or college tuition or, or um, loan forgiveness for these people that got scammed, because it's a scam. It's a system that we've set up that is now a scam. It has, and that's ethical and moral. It's like you would hire a lawyer under most circumstances and say, look, they sold me a bill of goods. I walked in. They told me when I got out, I get a job that would pay more than this loan because it's a professional thing and um, I'd be working my way up the ladder and within a few years I would be out of student, student loan debt rather than living in uh, my parents' house in the basement or something. And seriously, that's in, in normal circumstances and you could say, well, you're not very smart if you fell for that. Well, everybody tells you this, especially if you're 18 years old. I think Joe Rogan said this to Bernie Sanders. Your brain is not fully formed at that point, and you're making decisions that will change your life, and you're getting advice from people, and they're telling you, yeah, rack up $100,000 in debt or more, and then when you get out, you'll be able to pay it down, and that's not happening. So rather than bailing out car companies and banks, I think normal people should be first. That's all. I mean, this is a concept that Trump kind of ran on where he put people first in this country first. But yet, again, it's banks, car companies, other countries, Saudi Arabia, Israel, putting all of those people first. And most uh, Americans are sitting here going, OK, well, what about me? You know? Graham Elwood, the guy from uh, Jimmy Dore, how he lost his house. That's just heartbreaking stuff, you know. And these, um, these houses, plus the whole real estate market, the rental market, it's all just th this giant bubble where people, all of their income, they have no disposable income because they have to put it all into these things which shouldn't be 
such a high percentage of of what they earn. I mean, two incomes, one decent income should get you by in life. It should. And if it doesn't, then, you know, the money and the way we transact money, it, it needs to all uh, be reconfigured. There needs to be a correction. But people shouldn't be suffering. Uh, people didn't do this. Greedy corporations did this. Greedy banks did this. The system that we're currently in did this. I believe in, look, I believe in capitalism, but capitalism with controls, restraints, protections, FDR style. That's the way I think it should be done. But in any event, um, tell you what, no Tulsi and no reason for me to watch the debate. Yeah, I'll watch maybe the highlight reel of Bernie Sanders and uh, some of the stuff that he said. But for the most part, um, the Democratic Party right now is, is really in disarray. And the people who are running the party are just doing the exact same thing they did in 2016. And they're hoping that someone else emerges to defeat Sanders. And they're hoping that Tulsi Gabbard will just go away. And Tulsi's not going away. She's in there. She's already pledged to be in there until the convention, which is very interesting because I don't think I've even heard... Uh, top tier candidates talk that way supposed top tier candidates i should say tulsi is a top tier candidate it's just nobody uh is acknowledging that and maybe they should maybe they should look at some new polls in new hampshire all right i'm done with this video uh, the debate if someone wants to watch it for me and send me a message about it if you want to support my channel um please do uh, you can do it via patreon uh, you know, for a couple of dollars a month, whatever you want to do over there. Or you can send me a one-time gift via PayPal, which is much appreciated. It keeps things going. Uh, monetization sometimes is a struggle here. And uh, by the time you get monetized, you've lost a, a good chunk of your video's revenue since these videos aren't getting viewed 100,000 times. Uh, if I get to that point, I probably won't be asking you for any uh, extra donations you can just support the channel out of the goodness of your heart if that's what you want to do but uh, you know political independence uh, from the two party system and talking about like the green party that's not going to get me a lot of views it just won't and somebody said it's really not a model for a profitable youtube channel uh, in the year 2019 and i totally get that and that's what's kind of sad all right, done. I will be back soon, and uh, I will see you then.